Good day students! Today we will going to learn another math lesson and that is multiplication of decimals. Decimals are important because people use them every day in different situations such as counting money, looking at the price tag, reading an, an odometer, or even reviewing Olympic scores. For today's lesson, we will going to learn how to multiply with up to two decimal places, multiply decimal by the power of 10, and lastly, we will going to learn how to multiply decimals by one tenth, one hundred and one thousandths. Now this time, let's start with multiplying decimals with factors up to two decimal places. Okay, always remember, students, that in multiplying decimals okay no need for us to align our decimal point okay because we were going to apply our decimal point after we already found or find our product okay now for this one we were going to multiply 23 hundredths times 13 hundredths now let's do this one 3 times 3 this one is 9 3 times 2, this one is 6. By the way, when we multiply decimals, just continue multiplying just like what we do when we multiply whole numbers. Okay? We're just going to add the decimal point later on if already found our product. Okay? So let's continue. 3 times 0, that is 0. Okay, now let's continue with this one. 1 times 3, that is 3. 1 times 2, that is 2. And 1 times 0, that is 0. Okay, now let's go to the last one. 0 times 3, that is 0. 0 times 2, that is 0. And 0 times 0, of course, that is 0. And the last one, we're going to sum them up. Bring down 9. 6 plus 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, still 9, 2, and 0, 0. I don't know if you can see my writings. Hopefully you can see, students. And after we already have our product, that's the time that we're going to okay place our decimal point. So since we have here, how many decimal points do we have here? We have 1, 2, three four so we have four decimal places so we're going to move our decimal po point four places to the left so we have one two three and four so this will be the position of our decimal point so to see clearly our answer for this one is zero point zero two nine nine okay so that's it. That's how we multiply factors with two decimal places. Okay, now let's proceed. This time we're going to multiply 45 hundredths times 32 hundredths. So let's use the stack form. So 0 0.45. Multiply it by... 0.32 Again, when we multiply decimals Just keep on multiplying Just like how we multiply our whole numbers I will just go into add the decimal point After we already have our product So, 2 times 5, that is 10 Carry 1 2 times 4 is equal to 8 Plus 1 is equal to 9 2 times 0, that is 0. Let's go to the second number. 3 times 5, that is 15. Carry 1. 3 times 4, that is 12. 4, 8, 12. Plus 1, that is 13. And 3 times 0, the answer is 0. Just bring down 1. So we have here the last number is 0, 0 times 5 is 0, 0 times 4 is 0, 0 times 0, of course it is 0. 
and let's add them all so we have 0 we have 14 carry 1 we have 4 and we have 1 don't forget to bring down 0 now since we already have now our product this time we're going to place now our decimal point let's count how many decimal places do we have we have one two three four so we have four decimal place let's count four places to the left one two three four so this will be now the position of our decimal point so this will be now our final answer okay now this time let us try some word problem let us read may wishes to win the game in their mathematics class she was holding a strip of paper with a decimal number 82 hundredths her teacher instructed her to multiply it with 45 hundredths in order to get the price what will be her answer okay so for this one we were going to multiply 82 hundredths by 45 that so let us just keep on the multiplying 5 times 2 that is 10 to 0 carry 1 5 times 8 that is 40 plus 1 it's 41 5 times 0 of course it's 0 just bring down 4 okay let's go to the second number 4 times 2 is 8 4 times 8 is 32. Carry 3. 4 times 0 is 0. Bring down 3. So, 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 8 is 0. 0 times 0, of course, it is 0. Now, this time we're going to add to find our final answer. So, bring down 0. 1 plus 8 that is 9 4 plus 2 that is 6 and bring down 3 bring down 0 okay now this is not yet our final answer we need to count the decimal places so that we could place now our decimal point right right now we have how many decimal place it's 1 2 3 4 so 4 decimal places 1 2 3 and 4 so for our final answer we have 0 and 3690 10,000 okay so this time let us try to have another word problem Alvin weigh 32.53 kilograms. Adino weigh 1 and 2, 1.02 times as Alvin's weight. Now, what is Dino's weight? So, we're going to multiply. Okay. The Al Alvin's weight, weight to Dino's weight to find out the weight of Dino. So we have here 32.53 multiply it by 1.02. So multiply 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 5 is 10, carry 1, 2 times 2 is is 4 plus 1 that is 5 and 2 times 3 that is 6 so second number that is 0 0 0 and 0 the third one 1 times 3 that is 3 1 times 5 is 5 1 times 2 is 2 and 1 times 3 is equal to Okay, at this time, let us now add to find our product. Bring down 6, 0, we have 8, 
we have 11, 3, and 3. Let's count how many decimal points do we have. We have 4 decimal places. So let's count 4 places to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so Dina's weight is 33.1806,000 kilograms. Actually, we could round off this one into nearest hundreds. So this will be 33.18 kilograms. So this is now the weight of Dino. Okay, so here are the things to remember in multiplying decimals. When we multiply decimals, we need to align the decimal point in a straight column. We use the zero as a placeholder if needed. Multiply just like multiplying whole numbers. And lastly, count the number of the decimal places in the factors and this should be equal to the number of decimal place in the product. Note, start counting from right to left. Okay, now let's proceed in multiplication of decimals by the power of 10. Okay, actually, to have a faster way of multiplying decimals by 10, 100, and 1000, and so on, it is by okay all we have to do is just to move the decimal point one two three places to the right okay let's uh, let us have some examples here we have three and seven seventy six hundreds multiplied by ten so just look how many zeros do we have in ten we have one zero okay so all we have to do is just to move our decimal place one place to the right Okay, why 1? Because 10 has 1, 0. Okay, so the answer for this one, so we're going to move this one, the decimal point will be here. So, the final answer will be 37.6. Why 37.6? Because I just moved 1 decimal, one place to the right of our decimal point. Okay, why? Because we multiply it by 10 and 10 has only 1, 0, so 1, one place to the right okay so we have here multiplied by 100 100 has two zeros so we're going to move our decimal point two zeros to the right so one two this will be now the new position of our decimal point and for our final answer we have 8,979.6 and 6 tenths okay so the next one we multiply this one by 1,000. So 1,000 has three zeros. So we're going to move this one three, uh, three places to the right. One, two, three. So this will be now our uh, place of our decimal point. And for our final answer, we have 3,657. Okay. And for the last one, multiply this one by 10,000. So we're going to move our decimal point how many zeros one two three four so we're going to move four places to the right so one two three four so notice that we have here lacking digit so all we have to do is just to affix zero so for our final answer we have sixty nine thousand five hundred okay so for the lacking digit when we move our decimal place, just affix zero. Okay, so that's how we multiply decimals by the power of 10. Okay, when we multiply a decimal by the power of 10, we simply move the decimal point to the right depending on the number of zeros. Always remember, it depends on the number of zeros. If we multiply it by 10, 10 has only one zero, then we move the decimal point one place only to the right. If we multiply it by 100, then 100 has two zeros. Then we're going to move the decimal point two zeros to the right. It must depend on how many zeros do we have. Okay. 
The next one, we're going to multiply decimals by one tenth, one hundred and one thousand. When we multiply decimals by one tenth, one hundred and one thousand, we move our decimal point one, two, or three places. This time, we're going to move it to the left of our product. So while I go by the power of 10, we move our decimal point to the right. But if we're going to multiply it by one tenth, one hundred, and one thousand, we're going to move the decimal place or the decimal point to the left. Okay, now let's try to have some example. Multiply 85.7 by one tenth, one hundred, and one thousand. Let's try to have here 87.7. Multiply it by one tenth, so we have here one digit only. So we're going to move our decimal one place to the left. Okay, so this will be now the new place of our decimal point, and for our final answer, we have eight point fifty seven. Okay, so move one place to the left. For the next one, eighty five point seven times. 100 so in 100 we have two places it means we're going to move this one two places to the left one and two so for our final answer this will be now the position of our decimal point just affix zero here and for our final answer we have 0 0.857 thousands okay and for the last one, 85.7, multiply it by 1,000. We have 3 digits here, so we're going to move 3 places to the left. 1, 2, and 3. So this will be now the place of our decimal point. And then all we have to do is just to affect 0. And for our final answer, we have 0 0.0857. Okay, so we must take note that when we multiply a decimal by one tenth, one hundred, and one thousand, just move the decimal point two, three places to the left. So, before we leave, I'm going to give this one a challenge for you. You can place or you can answer this one and put your answer in the comment section below. Let us read a pair of maong pants cost 300. 75 pesos and 85 centavos and a short cost 125 pesos and 50 centavos less than the maong pants how much will be spent if all in all if you buy three shirts and two pair of pants so again you can answer this one and write your answer in our comment section below so thank you so much for listening i hope that you've learned something in our lesson and I really hope to see you again. Bye-bye.